talk. Yeah, so he was uh, speaking in you know, Obama for many times. So he's very well known for uh, black holes and magnetic fields and all these like, shadows. So okay. Okay, people, thank you very much for... Uh, maybe maybe, maybe uh, also more people will come during the time because... Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, it is open. So, uh, thank you very much for invitation and for coming here. Uh, yesterday I wanted to know how much time I was not here. So, I was here, I think, in December uh, 2019. And then, <laughs> after that, I was not in Europe during the last two years. Even more. Okay, uh, today I will speak about electromagnetic uh, uh, electrodynamics of magnetized neutron stars and why it is important. It is important because uh, we have rich observational phenomenology which is coming from the uh, neutron stars and it is related to the existence of the magnetic field. So, from this point of view, electrodynamics of the magnetized neutron star is very important task and then uh, it is the reason why we are interested about vacuum electrodynamics and plasma magnetosphere and then I will uh, discuss these questions. So the uh, most important thing uh, when we, uh, we may compare electrodynamics and uh, GR and when we look to the general relativity uh, 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 to the Newtonian gravity in Newtonian gravity we have F, which is proportional to the gamma, let us say gamma is 1, then we have uh, M, M, R squared, M. Okay, so, uh, and if we will c compare with the co columns long, low, it, it will be Pu, Pu, R squared, M. So, from this point of view, we would say that uh, uh, the mass which is included in the Newtonian gravity, it is the charge. So it is a gravitational charge. And then if we compare the equation of motion for this uh, in electrodynamics and uh, uh, in Newtonian gravity, we, we will have something which is very dif uh, different. For example, mdb on dt is equal to e e plus e t v cross b. Yes, but uh, in Newtonian gravity we have something which we call gravity electric field. So it is the field which is uh, created by the uh, static charge. So the motion of the uh, uh, static charge does not produce any gravitational field. It is very strange because we don't have here the part which is related to the uh, uh, dynamics of the gravitational source. It, it does not exist. So, and then uh, if we will go to general, to GR case, in GR case we can uh, uh, see the equation of motion and then we can get something which is, if we will take uh, for the equation of motion s slow velocity and uh, weak gravity, we can get something which is very similar to uh, here, okay, M, then M, C, V, cross B, G. So, we, we get something which is very similar to the electrodynamics, so it is, uh, it is called greater magnetic field. So, if we have some rotating souls, then it produces the dynamical part, so there is a uh, gravitational field which is produced by the static uh, mass and the rotation of the mass will produce you a greater magnetic field. So the, the question is, and then it can interact, so for example, you may consider, for example, supermassive black hole which is interacting with neutron stars or magnetized particles, so it is spin-spin interaction can be explored for the compact objects. And now, why uh, we do not see this part in the solar system? So, uh, if we will uh, look to the uh, angular velocity, which will be produced by the by the spin, so it will be 
gamma m a c square r q. So there is some. Uh, it is called when the tearing angular velocity or the dragging of inertial frames. So there is some uh, uh, frequency which is uh, decaying, rapidly decaying, F1 over R cube. So it is means that if uh, you have some extended body as our sun or uh, Earth, then this effect, if I will uh, multiply it to R and divide C, C I will get some uh, dimensionless parameter, and this dimensionless parameter is equal to 10 minus 16 near to the Earth. So, uh, effect uh, uh, of this uh, uh, greater magnetic field is not measurable. So, in the solar uh, uh, system, the greater magnetic uh, field does not play any role. So, it is not uh, interesting to study it because it is negligible. Okay, so it is the reason why we have a discrepancy between Lorentz force and the Newtonian gravity. And uh, now we can go where we can study. So we need to have something which is rapidly rotating and then it is uh, very complex. Uh, these are objects uh, as uh, neutron stars and neutron stars can be uh, started to be observed in the 60s uh, in the X-ray sources. So uh, people did not recognize them but they were ob uh, observed in the 60s. Uh, so and then uh, why it is very important? Because uh, uh, when we look to the uh, uh, neutron stars, so the accretion uh, or black holes, the accretion of the matter is the most uh, uh, energetic process in the nature. So if we will take annihilation, so it will give you uh, an plus, it will give you two gamma. So here you have. 100% of energy release. So energy released in the uh, totally, but the energy which is uh, extracted is extremely low. So it is not interesting. So we need to have something which uh, would produce uh, with less efficiency, but more energy. So if we will calculate the energy which we will be produced by our sun, it is uh, through nuclear fusion, it is only 0.1% of the total energy during 10 billion years. But here we have uh, what uh, Zildovich and Salpeter have understood. They have understood that the accretion is 100 times more efficient than uh, nuclear fusion. So it is very highly energetic process and it can uh, produce you uh, uh, more than 10 percent of energy and then the first model of the accretion disk with viscosity was uh, uh, constructed by Shakura and Tsunayev. Actually Rashid Tsunayev is from Tashkent. So it, uh, and it is very uh, uh, important uh, accretion disk model where viscosity, uh, Martin knows it very well. Yes, so this is uh, uh, you have, uh, if you, uh, for example, in Keplerian uh, uh, disk, you have this uh, uh, velocity is equal to gamma m over r. So uh, when uh, the inner part of accretion disk uh, has a bigger velocity with compared to the outer part, and uh, what uh, says uh, this uh, magnetic rotational instability? So if you put this system in the magnetic field, then it will produce you some instability brings to turbulence and this turbulence is the reason of the alpha viscosity of course in this model they did not care about it they they put it by artificially but uh, uh, actually it is the uh, magnetic field uh, makes this uh, so most important in uh, astrophysics it is the energetics of the astrophysical objects so energetics of the astrophysical objects give, uh, gives you uh, the whole observability. So if energetics is very high, then you would observe it very well. If there is no energetics, you would not observe it. And uh, so uh, for uh, the stars in the main sequence, we have uh, nuclear fusion is the main source of the energy. So here we have uh, for example, for the sun, it is 4 multiplied to 10 power 33 x per second. 
So if we would go to the uh, center of the galaxies, uh, en uh, energy here is huge uh, in active galactic nuclei, and as we have said, that uh, there are different mechanisms, accretion and plant snake and other things, but uh, in, in these processes, magnetic field plays a very important role, but uh, uh, if we would, look, uh, would uh, uh, look to the neutron stars, neutron stars, we have zoo of neutron stars, so they are observed as different objects, and each of them is related to the different source of the energy. So if we, if we would have the uh, isolated uh, pulsars, which are uh, observed, for example, here it is the craft pulsar, here we have magnetic field, and this is the period of the pulsars. So, these objects are powered by the kinetic energy of the rotation. So if we will have an isolated source, then in isolated source, kinetic energy of the rotation uh, through a magnetic field will be transformed to electromagnetic radiation and it will slow down. So it is uh, uh, then we have other sources which are called magnetars. Magnetars are uh, highly powered uh, uh, so fr from the magnetic field, they have uh, 10 in power 15 gauss at the surface, so they are uh, highly magnetic objects, and usually they have period uh, uh, of rotation, they are not very rapid, between 1 to 10 seconds, they are slowly rotating, and their uh, energetics is related to the magnetic field. So, uh, magnetic energy of these objects is million times bigger than energy of the ordinary neutron stars because energy is proportional to b squared a pi s then uh, having uh, uh, 1000 times bigger magnetic field it will create uh, a million times more uh, magnetic energy so it it it, uh, it is observed through burning of the magnetic uh, energy and then the, there are other types also, so there is uh, a type which is uh, in the low mass X-ray binaries. So if we have, uh, in the, as I have said, accretion is the most powerful source of the release of the energy. So in the accretion disk, uh, low mass X-ray binaries, we can observe uh, millisecond pulsars and their energy is uh, uh, powered through accretion and then in the binary X-ray pulsars also through accretion. In addition, the uh, uh, neutron stars can oscillate. The oscillating uh, uh, energy, kinetic energy of the oscillations can create you also electromagnetic radiation. So it is the uh, energetics of the uh, uh, neutron stars and if we will look to the uh, uh, historically, what was done in the so the pioneering paper was made by Armin Deutsch in 1955. So what he has considered so it was sphere in the Newtonian case, uh, which was uh, 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 rotating, magnetized, and then uh, it uh, uh, he has calculated the whole set of the solutions. So all uh, uh, electrodynamics for the uh, rotating uh, star in a Newtonian case was made uh, in his uh, very important paper and then it was extended uh, by different authors to the vacuum case. So if, if we would assume that uh, it is surrounded by vacuum, then uh, it, uh, it was uh, obtained for the oscillating star by different authors and then uh, 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 if we look to the uh, black hole case. So, in the black hole case, uh, the pioneering paper is by Ginsburg and Azernov in 1964. So, they have uh, considered the, uh, the magnetized uh, star collapsing and the, what uh, they have found the exact analytical solutions and uh, uh, then it was extended by Peterson in 1974 for the uh, current loop, which is uh, creating uh, magnetic field and uh, extended to the magnetic dipolar cases. And then uh, for uh, rotating case uh, in GR was done in this uh, and uh, plus oscillations. And then 
evolution of magnetics uh, of electrodynamics was also started uh, to, to be studied in the literature. And uh, I, what I would say is that uh, what is important, uh, if we would, would go to the Newtonian case, so magnetic flux during the collapse is, uh, uh, is conserved, and it gives us that uh, when uh, R uh, the, of the star tends to zero, magnetic moment of the black hole is equal to zero. So uh, uh, according to the uh, uh, Newtonian uh, gravity, so magnetic moment of the uh, black hole with uh, zero size will be equal to zero. And this was uh, uh, shown by Ginsburg Azerno and uh, others for the multiples. So they have shown that during the gravitational collapse, magnetic field decay is one over T and it will decay with the time, but if we will uh, include the multi-poles, uh, that it will uh, decay even faster. So it is means that the intrinsic magnetic moment of the black hole is equal to zero. So a uh, black hole does not have uh, own uh, magnetic uh, field. So then, now, uh, what is, uh, uh, was, uh, our task, so uh, we want to find uh, solutions of the Maxwell equations uh, in the uh, uh, given background, because why we say that it is in the given background? Because uh, contribution of the electromagnetic field in the uh, energy momentum tensor is equal to zero. From this point of view, we can uh, solve it separately, so we can find uh, the uh, solutions of the Maxwell equations in the given gravitational background. So why it is so? Because when we look to the contribution which is coming from the magnetic field, even for the magnetar, it is 10 in power minus 6. So uh, the uh, contribution of the electromagnetic field to the gravitational field of the neutron star is absolutely zero. So this approximation work, works very good. And other approximation comes from the uh, assumption that we consider the slowly rotating uh, magnetized neutron star. And then uh, uh, you, you may ask the question, why do you consider the slow rotation? Because, uh, and then the answer is the following, because if, even if we will take the millisecond pulsars, so the uh, contribution which is uh, coming from the second order term is about 10 percent. So from this point of view, this uh, slow rotation approximation, so uh, if you go to the uh, known paper by Hartle Thorne in 1969, so slow rotation is a very good approximation for the, uh, for the neutron star space-time geometry. And uh, here, uh, uh, what is uh, very important, so we have only one non-diagonal term, which is included to the space-time metric. And this uh, case gives us opportunity to find exact analytical solutions of the Maxwell equations, and uh, which is very interesting. So uh, here we say that uh, we, we can divide it into two regions. One of them will be what we say that uh, we have uh, from some uh, in interior part from R in to R, so it is the interior, and then external we have vacuum. So uh, the problem can be divided and, uh, into uh, tasks, and uh, actually the uh, solution will depend only from two parameters, from mass and uh, Okay, now what we say is that the magnetic moment is inclined to the rotation axis, which is, and then look to the um, separable solutions of the Maxwell equations. So what we know from the uh, methods of the mathematical physics, yes? So all uh, equations of physics are differential uh, partial equations of the second order, 
with respect to potential, let us say, yes? And then we know, if there is no uh, um, uh, time-dependent part, so it is uh, uh, Laplacian F is equal to zero, then these solutions are expressed through uh, Legendre polynomials. So it was necessary to bring everything to the Legendre poly polynomials and uh, to find the solutions, so we can look for them and then find the solution. So uh, when we go to the, uh, we can get the equation for the radial part, the equations are totally separable, so we can separate them. And then uh, for the interior of the magnet uh, case, what we say is that, uh, we, we say that uh, uh, interior of the uh, uh, magnetic field uh, is uh, constant. So it is constant magnetic field inside the uh, uh, neutron star. And we look for the analytical solutions. And what we have found that uh, equation of state. So we, we can get this from the Maxwell equations and then compare it with the Oppinger-Oppinger-Heimer-Volkov equations. And that uh, it gives us the solutions where, uh, 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 for example, if we say it is uniform magnetic field solution, so the equation of the state will be uh, stiff. P is equal to rho. It is unrealistic, but it is exact solution. Okay? So, and then we assume that uh, uh, interior, for example, when we look to the interior of the uh, uh, neutron star, Sigma is proportional to t, uh, t in power 3 over 2. So it is means that uh, the uh, conductivity of the uh, matter inside neutron star is extremely high. So we, uh, if we would assume that sigma is infinite, then we get uh, E is equal to 0. So this, this if we will write it in the uh, GR case, we can get this condition. OK. And then uh, what we, we have found, so Maxwell equation uh, outside. So outside can be written in this form. And the solution of this equation is uh, Legendre uh, uh, functions. So uh, finding them, we can get the solution for the uh, magnetic field is uh, even for the rotating neutron star, solution for magnetic field does not depend from the angular momentum of the star. So the question is why? Because uh, uh, it is the reason because of our approximation. Because in our approximation, we say that uh, it is a linear approximation in angular velocity of rotation. And the uh, next uh, uh, term comes in omega in square, but it is neglected. So then the task becomes very simple. So we find the uh, analytical solution for interior of the star. Yes, so this is, uh, so then we can study how it behaves near the, and then for the electric field, uh, of course, uh, it will include the angular velocity of rotation, and we will have very uh, complex equations. So he here we can introduce some different functions and find the solutions for them. So we, we were able to find, again, through Legendre functions, the uh, solutions. So this is what we have got for the uh, exterior solution. So this, if you look now to the exterior solution for the electric field, so there will be term which is coming from the uh, spin of the neutron star, and then there is uh, ordinary Newtonian term. So uh, we, we can see that the electric field of the ro rotating uh, neutron star depending on, on the spin of the neutron star. So it depends from the GR effect. So uh, this uh, term does not uh, uh, exist in the Newtonian approach. So then we get uh, 
the same, so we get the following. So then we can study, so initially we have considered that uh, a magnetic moment does not depend on the time. We can get the solutions for when the functions become the time dependent, but uh, this shows that this becomes very important when we take unrealistic numbers for the conductivity, but uh, usually we have 20 order bigger conductivity, so it is meant that for highly conductive uh, system, the uh, evolution in the time of magnetic field is equal to zero, so it can be uh, uh, dropped. And other question, uh, which is very important, so if you uh, go, go to helio seismology, so in the helio seismology, the interior structure of the sun is uh, uh, studied uh, through uh, uh, oscillations of the sun. So study of the oscillations can give you interior structure. From this point of view, since uh, we can observe the quasi-periodic oscillations uh, from soft gamma ray repeaters, we can say that uh, the study of the internal structure of the neutron star can, uh, can be done through study of the oscillations and uh, for uh, this reason we can study so we can now look how the oscillations of the uh, uh, neutron star can change the electrodynamics what is uh, uh, important here so you have uh, let us say uh, this is neutron star and uh, magnetic field B is frozen. So it is frozen in, into the matter. When it is, uh, this uh, star is oscillating, let us say, then the crust, uh, so it will, uh, the magnetic field will be uh, equal to B0, which is uh, initial magnetic field, plus delta B, which is related with the fact that the magnetic field lines will move together with the matter. So matter is oscillating and it moves uh, together with matter the magnetic field lines. The magnetic field lines will oscillate and create uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation. So it is the uh, way how... And then we can uh, look how uh, the, these oscillations can dissipate. So dissipation of the... Uh, uh, oscillations which are coming through uh, electromagnetic radiation which is produced by the uh, so here this study what we say is that uh, uh, velocity perturbations are much less than the velocity of the light and here also we can consider uh, two uh, regimes one of them is the near zone so just out outside the where we have the quasi-stationary electromagnetic field and in the wave zone which is very far from the uh, magnetized neutron star so and uh, one of the interesting oscillations are toroidal oscillations so what we say is that each it is uh, very similar to onion each layer has own velocity but uh, in the radial direction we don't have any oscillations so it is uh, it changes harmonically with the time. So uh, if we will uh, look to the frequency range, so if uh, this uh, uh, displacement will be about 10 minus 3 from the radius of the star, so it will be uh, less than 10 in power 7 hertz. So it is the range where we can observe the electromagnetic radiation which comes from the so here you can see the toroidal oscillations, which depends from the symmetry. When we don't have uh, uh, m is not equal to zero, the symmetry is uh, uh, violated. So we can have very interesting. Uh, so here also you can use the Maxwell uh, uh, this Ohm's law and consider what will be inside. So. In the near zone, as I said, that it is uh, expressed to uh, regender polynomials, so we, we get the exact solutions. So it is, these uh, expressions are very generic. So here you can use any velocity of perturbations, which are uh, 
uh, inside of this um, integration of constants. So integration constants uh, uh, x here introduces x one minus r over m. It is the uh, quantity which which is inside this. And electric fields also can be uh, obtained in the generic form. In the wave zone, which is interesting, so here the um, um, uh, radiation is expressed through Hankel functions, so it is also very generic expressions. And what is important here, so integrational constants, which are in the wave zone solutions, they incorporate the value of the uh, velocity and magnetic field at the surface of, this, uh, of the neutron star. So uh, the electromagnetic radiation in the wave zone depends from the general relativistic quantities which are uh, defined at the boundary. So because uh, we, we use the boundary condition to, uh, to connect the uh, co uh, integration constants and then we can, now we can look to very simple model. So uh, since we developed uh, the uh, electrodynamics for the uh, oscillating uh, star, we can introduce very simple uh, model saying that uh, uh, the, it is uh, rotating dipole. So for the rotating dipole, we can uh, now introduce uh, the uh, electromagnetic luminosity. So electro we can, can calculate uh, uh, electric and magnetic field in the wave zone, and then as uh, E cross B uh, will be proportional to the luminosity. So we can uh, cal calculate the luminosity and get how it differs when we take into account the Newtonian uh, terms. So what we do here, so you can see here that uh, luminosity will de 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 depending on the compactness of the neutron star, it can be essentially differ as compared to the uh, Newtonian case. So it, it can be uh, uh, bigger uh, up to one order. Yes. So this is uh, uh, there is increase of the energy loss through dipolar electromagnetic radiation because it is the most important quantity which we could measure. So uh, in the experiment we measure the p dot and uh, then it gives us uh, the uh, luminosity of the neutron star. So now uh, what we say is that uh, we can apply to the different models because uh, the mm, uh, if we consider the case when, uh, for example, we can uh, consider neutral stars versus to the strange stars, because strange stars uh, have uh, uh, bigger compactness, and then we can compare them. So here uh, you can see how uh, usually we have all my, uh, neutron stars have mass about 1.4 solar masses, and we can see how uh, this uh, number depends from the equation of state. So uh, what we have got here, uh, depending on the neutron star or uh, uh, strange star, so we can get different number. So, so the ratio of the uh, p dot to p dot of the neutron star can be different depending on the compactness of the star. So it is means that uh, uh, if we would uh, uh, know exactly the moment of the inertia of the uh, neutron star through uh, p dot, through the uh, spin down of the neutron star, we can distinguish is it a neutron star or a strange star. So it is uh, what can be done in the future. So we consider different oscillations, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, oscillations uh, can. Uh, the question was how the toroidal oscillations or spheroidal oscillations can be transformed to the electromagnetic radiation, and uh, we have calculated the damping time of the 
uh, electromagnetic radiation. So it gives us the seconds. So you can see the seconds where when the uh, oscillations can be damped. So they are damped due to the uh, electromagnetic radiation takes away the energy of the uh, kinetic energy of the oscillations and this can be applied for other things but if you would consider that uh, uh, joel heating joel heating is uh, much ne negligible so we say that uh, if we, uh, uh, since uh, the conductivity of the uh, matter in neutron star is very high so joule heating does not play any role in the energy loss okay this is uh, what we can uh, now it is uh, uh, i would say the following if we would consider the uh, vacuum electrodynamics of the uh, neutron star everything looks uh, very uh, clear because we have uh, uh, Maxwell equations which are solvable. So we know the methods of the mathematical physics which can be applied for the uh, near zone solutions when we have quasi stationary uh, magnetic field and in the wave zone we, we have uh, uh, equations which will give us uh, solutions in the form of the Bessel functions which will give you Hankel functions which are some of the Bessel functions. So it is the methods of the mathematical physics uh, work very well and you can clearly describe the vacuum electrodynamics of the neutron star without any problems in the form of the exact analytical solutions. So it is very important and then you can get it uh, in uh, GR because in GR also you have only uh, one term uh, due to the slow rotation so it can be done. So, but uh, the problem is the following. So, the whole set of the problems, it is solved, but uh, how it is realistic? Uh, is it realistic to consider the uh, vacuum electrodynamics of the neutron stars? And uh, uh, so, answer is no. So, uh, why it is no? Why we need uh, to go beyond vacuum electrodynamics? It comes from very simple uh, estimations, so when we go to the, uh, we can make very simple estimation of the electric field and uh, what it gives us. So electric field will be extremely uh, high, so it, it, it is this 10 in power, uh, 10, uh, 10 volt per centimeter, so it is very high uh, electric field, will extract uh, electrons from the crust of the neutron stars and then they will be accelerated. So uh, this uh, very strong uh, electric field will ac accelerate the particles and uh, if you will uh, make calculations it shows that in very short uh, um, distance, so in, in centimeters uh, they will be accelerated to ultra relativistic velocities and uh, they will produce uh, 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 gamma quanta, which will uh, uh, form electron positron pairs. So the surrounding of the neutron star will be filled in by electron positron plasma is in very short time. So it is means that uh, for realistic case, uh, uh, if we will take the estimations that for typical numbers of the neutron stars, we can get that uh, answer that the Magnetosphere, plasma magnetosphere from electron positron pairs will fill in the surrounding of the uh, neutron star. And uh, plasma, uh, uh, since it is uh, uh, force free, it will be corrotating with the neutron star. So the plasma is corrotating with the neutron star, but not in the whole place. So when we look to the uh, to the plasma magnetosphere, it has very complex structure. So here, in a very short time, it, it is uh, it produces gamma quanta, which is uh, uh, brings electron positron pairs. And then, since the plasma is rotating, so it cannot uh, rotate up to infinity because uh, we, we have uh, the boundary omega r light. Let us see, uh, is equal to one. 
So we can make this uh, cylinder. So here it is uh, uh, border of the cylinder is equal to R L is equal C over omega. Yes. So it is the uh, uh, radius of the light cylinder. Yeah. Okay. And then it can extend up to the light cylinder and beyond of the light cylinder you will not have any plasma because this plasma should rotate uh, with the speed of the light but nothing can be moving uh, higher than the speed of the light then it stops at the boundary and uh, uh, so the uh, electrons uh, uh, will start uh, will move along the magnetic field and comes uh, back to the uh, surface of the neutron star but uh, but this part of the magnetosphere is not interesting. Why? Because uh, here we have uh, uh, force-free uh, magnetosphere. So the, in, uh, when the work is performed by the electric field, but electric field is always perpendicular to the uh, uh, velocity of the rotation. So there is no parallel electric field which can accelerate the particles. And since there is no any acceleration, so they move along this uh, magnetic field lines and do not produce any energy. So from the energetic point of view, it, it is not interesting. So for us, uh, the most interesting part is the open magnetic field lines area. So we have polar cap in the uh, very small area from where uh, uh, magnetic field li lines start and go to infinity. They uh, bring out uh, the energy of the uh, uh, of the kinetic energy of the uh, neutron star. So, uh, as I said, the magnetic field plays a role of catalyzator which performs some energy into electromagnetic radiation. Yes? Here, here uh, in the polar cup, uh, particles can, uh, along open magnetic field lines, can go to infinity and uh, take the energy away and uh, the um, star uh, is losing kinetic energy and we observe it. So, when you look to the pulsars, there is spin down of the... It is very uh, small, but there is spin down. Okay. And now, what is interesting, uh, here uh, uh, the most important it is the uh, gold drive Julian charge density which will be produced in the uh, magnetosphere and uh, if we look to the uh, what is important in this uh, uh, case uh, for example in uh, with respect to all other processes in the magnetosphere the uh, lensitering effect so angular velocity of the rotation of the neutron star is becoming uh, linear. So here kappa is the term which is proportional to the A. So it is meant that uh, 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 the lensitering effect is becoming very important in the plasma magnetosphere. Why it is so? Because uh, this uh, uh, it is very geometric effect which comes from the fact that uh, angular velocity of rotation depends on the uh, the case is 1 over r cube so uh, it brings to the fact that if we will have uh, uh, this difference uh, is zero at the surface of the star since it the case is 1 over cube it will give you some linear effect so uh, the it is becoming very important and then we can study uh, different parameters which are related to the uh, uh, s s uh, to, to other parameters also for example we considered velocity also can give you the uh, effects uh, linear effects here what, what we see for example when we look to the gold drive Julian density we can uh, it is a velocity perturbations so uh, velocity perturbations are coming as linear terms in the energy loss. So energy, so if we consider slowly rotating neutron star which subjects to the uh, to the oscillations, 
then we can get that uh, gold, gold Reichelian density depends on the uh, multipolarity and uh, uh, it is uh, linear to the velocity perturbations. So uh, these uh, uh, solutions show that uh, uh, the uh, luminosity of the neutron star depends from the oscillations. So oscillations change the luminosity of the and uh, when we look to these uh, terms, uh, if we have uh, the uh, mm, symmetric modes, then it, it, uh, the picture is very symmetric. But when we look to the non-symmetric, we will get uh, asymmetric distribution of the uh, charge in the magnetosphere. So it is very important because this asymmetry can be used to the Subpulse draft, uh, drift, and other phenomena which we, we could observe from the neutron stars. So this is uh, for the electric field. So here we have longitudinal component of electric field which will accelerate. It is again depends from the uh, symmetry of the task. And then we see that uh, luminosity will change depending on the... This can be applied to the different uh, uh, pulsars so what uh, was our interest in our study so there are some uh, we know that majority of neutron stars are observed so is there about 2000 which are observed as radio pulsars but among them there are some interesting objects which are called intermittent uh, uh, pulsars these pulsars uh, uh, observed as pulsars and then they disappear so quasi periodically. So they uh, appear and disappear. So some of them have uh, uh, on period 5 10 days and off period 35 days. So they appear and disappear. So uh, since uh, these stellar oscillations change the energetics of the uh, neutron stars, we wanted to know how. Uh, it, it may change the um, uh, energetically uh, energy loss from the neutron star. It seems, uh, so if we will have some uh, neutron star which uh, quasi-periodically oscillates, so when uh, uh, there is a star quake or something, so the oscillations comes and then they are damped in, let us say, in 10 days and then disappear. Again, some uh, Mm, oscillations come and then they can give it as uh, quasi periodic so it was one of the alternative uh, uh, explanations which we can uh, make for the uh, pulsars so uh, other thing which is very observable and interesting it is the uh, So, in order to be to form plasma magnetosphere, it is two parameters are very important. So, one of them is the angular velocity of rotation. So, as we said, this uh, rho Goldrich Julian is proportional to omega b. Yes. So, we need to have uh, uh, good omega and b. But uh, we understood that omega is decaying with the time. Magnetic field is also decaying with the time, yes? So, uh, if uh, we would have uh, something uh, when uh, uh, low uh, velocity or low magnetic field, so then uh, we can make the death line which will show the boundary between the observability of the neutron star. So, if the neutron star is under death line, then it would be not observed. So, in order to be observed, it should be uh, above the death line, okay? So, now for the, this uh, intermittent pulsars, we say that they are uh, prob most probably very close to the uh, death line and the oscillations bring them up to the uh, upper case. So, this is what we can say. Now we wanted to apply this, uh, all these things to the magnetars because uh, uh, we said that we have uh, uh, 
Magnetars, which are observed as so gamma ray uh, repeaters or uh, low mass X-ray binaries. And we wanted to understand how the death line will depend from the oscillations of the neutron star and other parameters. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, what we can say is that depending on the oscillations, on the uh, on the parameter kappa, it is the uh, rota uh, rotation of the neutron star. So what is uh, it is doing? So it is bringing uh, the death line above. So for example, uh, death lines are moving uh, with respect to the uh, initial stage. They uh, strongly depends on the so uh, this death line comes here and make the neutron uh, the magnetar is not observable. So they cannot be observed as uh, uh, pulsars due to the uh, move motion of the death line. So here we can look to the how it depends from the angle. So it strongly depends from the inclination angle of the magnetic field to the rotation, let us say, and uh, it is uh, also, we say that um, the, mm, but, uh, the oscillations uh, move these death lines down. So, for example, uh, what we see is this, uh, so gamma ray repeaters, so the magnetars are observed as soft gamma ray repeaters time from time. So we say that if we would have very strong oscillations, then uh, this line is uh, going down and we observe them as uh, rather loud, but then they disappear. Okay, so when we, these oscillations are done, we, they disappear. It is uh, what we uh, may say about these objects and uh, Okay, and uh, other thing which was uh, also applied, so we can consider how it can change to the fast radio burst. So it can give us this change to the observability of the fast radio burst, which are coming from the neutron stars. And uh, now it is interesting uh, how, uh, so we understood, yes, so we have different, uh, area, so it is a closed magnetic field lines area, it is not interesting for us at all. So we don't study it uh, at all, but now uh, in the, uh, uh, along the open magnetic field lines, we can consider how the particles can, uh, 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 can accelerate. So acceleration of the particles in the, uh, uh, along the open magnetic field lines is very important. And uh, here, what is uh, 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 important, there is one quantity which is called uh, Gold, Gold, uh, Goldreich Julian. Uh, so we can say that uh, you can see G is equal to rho V, yes? So if we will take some quantity, G uh, Goldreich Julian, let us say, it is rho gold reflection multiplied to c. Okay, this is the quantity which we uh, uh, say it is j star. Okay, and then what is happening here? So if we uh, uh, so, so the motion of the uh, particles, for example, Lorentz factor, uh, strongly depends on this ratio. So for example, if this uh, ratio is bigger than one, yes, here. Then we have, uh, the particle will be accelerated, so we, we have this uh, Lorentz factor, which is growing with the, uh, uh, with the time, yes, uh, with the distance. But uh, if we would have uh, uh, the electric uh, current, which is less than